So uh, we're back, um, and the great thing about having your own TV show is that when you want to talk to somebody a bit more in depth, you can, you can ask them to stay here. So I've asked Connor to stay so we can have a bit more of a chat um, about uh, the Irish economy, the history of the Irish economy, and maybe where things are going. And um, we were talking in the, the, the interview on the show about the IFSC and the importance mm. of that. Can you just maybe give us a bit of history of that and where did it come from? Well, I mean, it starts off in 1987, and um, according, uh, uh, you know, according to the newspapers at the time, it came out of a of a dinner kind of conversation. Um, uh, it was held between Charlie High, who was in opposition at the time, and uh, Dermot Desmond, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Irish kind of billionaire guy, and they came up with this idea that it, it wouldn't be great if Ireland was a tax haven for 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 international finance. And this would be absolutely wonderful. And the very first thing which uh, Charlie Hottie does when he wins that election as a minority government, but like you know, he wins in, in 1987, is that he sets up the, uh, the, uh, the IFSC, so mm -hmm. uh, the International uh, Finance Services Centre. And even though it, it, was, it, was, it was down to saying that its job is to bring international companies into Ireland to help expand you know, the, uh, the Irish economy. Um, it basically uh, brought Ireland's kind of low, low like, corporation tax that was for uh, by manufacture. They then extended that into finance, and that was the big change in yeah. like 1987. But the very first company <clears throat> or like corporation that moves into the IFSC was Allied Irish Bank. So immediately, it's it's plainly obvious why this has been kind of set up. Here, here's an Irish bank that overnight slashes its tax bill because it's now part of the of the IFSC. The gas thing about it is that this is completely open and it's never questioned. You know, it sounds to me the way you say it like that that it's like what the mafia done. It's like a bit yeah. like money laundering kind of stuff. You know, we'll 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 massage the figures. We'll put we'll filter through this system and out that system, and everybody's going to be happy. Oh, the mafia are just amateurs. I mean, they are absolute amateurs. You know. Um, I mean, this is what it's about. I mean, uh, uh, since uh, the 1970s or like 1980s, uh, uh, there's, a, it, there's this banking system that has emerged internationally. It's given the phrase the shadow banking system. Mm -hmm. and, and the IFSC is a hub in all of this. There's around $1.4 or $1.6 trillion in wealth that is managed in the IFSC. It, and the Irish, in, uh, the Irish kind of GDP is around 140 billion. Mm -hmm. So it's nearly 15, 16 times the size of the Irish economy. It's, it's being managed on a day-to-day -day basis, 24-7 in the, in the IFSC. And is that international money or is it Irish money? Or? It's, a, it's a mixture of both. I mean, in the, in the IFSC, there's around, the, you know, in its yearbook, there's 428 companies that are listed. Um, around 13% of them have zero employees. These are blast. These are known as brass play by companies. Um, they're here in name only for kind of tax purposes. When it comes in via email, and then it goes out via email, and mm -hmm. nobody is employed. Um, but of that, there's around 80 companies, you know, um, you know, who are listed as being Irish in the IFSC, and the vast majority of them are wealth management uh, like companies. Now, whose wealth they are managing, we don't mm -hmm. know. But um, but that's where it's all happening, you know. I mean, this is where, this is its, you know, its role. I mean, I, I was once kind of joking, saying that if this was Star Wars, the IFSC is the Death Star. I mean, this is where it's all happening, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that area where the IFSC has kind of an interesting history. My dad walked down there on the cattle market. Yeah. And it seemed like that Dublin, if you were, if you wanted walk, you went down to the cattle market. But mm. th that was like a, another big kind of money system where the bosses sat in pubs and handed out jobs and, and, and earned millions on the backs of a working class men. It did, you know, and like, you know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, there was the button men uh, down in the docks as well, uh, where you sold your right to a job. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a button, you know, it's an interesting little nothing, you know, in itself. I mean, in the, in the 1920s, uh, with kind of partition and the establishment of the Irish Free State, um, the Irish economy's role in the British economy doesn't change. Its role since the 1860s was basically to provide live cattle uh, and, and finance. Uh, that was, uh, but in cattle, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was exported over to England where it was slaughtered and real value then is made where the, where the cow 
is turned into into meat, into into leather, into into chemicals, into spinal fluid, all mm -hmm. all these kind of things, whatever. So all that value is is, is made in in kind of Great Britain. There's a raw material in Ireland. It's it's cattle and it's being exported over to Britain, where real money is being made. But the guys in Ireland who are in charge of that export business are making so much money in an Irish, you know, the terms, whatever, that they're kind of king players over here. So you have this, uh, this kind of folk memory of the rancher and the ranchers in Ireland, uh, you know, based on kind of meat and like so forth. And like Fine Gael would be seen as the rancher party and, and like, uh, you know, all, all, all these kind of things. In the 1950s, for various kind of reasons, that, that model starts uh, to run out of steam. And this is where bringing in foreign companies really kind of takes off. Now, when foreign companies do come in, um, that model of being the kind of intermediate in between the resources of the Irish state and foreign capital, those guys in the middle, mm -hmm. it, it may have been cattle in the 1930s, now it's finance, now it's the euro, but their role hasn't changed. Those skills have reproduced themselves and how they reproduce themselves are through various kind of state agencies like banks, like the state you know, itself, education and so forth. We're told this is what entrepreneurs do in Ireland. Yeah. You know, it goes back to the, you know, to the uh, uh, Paddy Cullen, or no, you know, he's the, Bill. it's Bill Cullen. Uh, Paddy Cullen is the, is the Dublin uh, goalie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But like, you know, it's Bill Cullen, you know, who brings <laughs> French cars into Ireland and then sells them onto the mix. Yeah. And that's his, and that's his, and he's put forward as the, as the guy who everyone, you know, actually wants to be. Well, we're not like, making you know, that, we're just middleman kind of. Middleman, it's, it, you know, exactly. It's not making anything. So when, when kind of foreign companies are brought into Ireland, they need factories or to be built, office space, uh, a greenfield, uh, or like uh, acres of land has to be bought and sold. So then, so then you, you know, this is where in, in the 1960s, the builder as an entrepreneur really kind of takes off in Ireland. And, and the builder is associated with, with kind of Fianna Fáil because these are the guys who are getting paid on foreign capital coming into Ireland. Mm -hmm. Now, internationally, that kind of wears off in the 1980s. But that model of building is how you make money and speculate on building that still has its hold in the 1980s, though, it becomes finance and the IFSC. And you get Spencer Dock then, you know, that's run by um, uh, uh, like Johnny, Lo uh, Johnny Rogan, or Johnny, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, and like his company, yeah. who get into building kind of Spencer Dock and the land speculation in the Docklands itself, pushing out working class kind of communities, you know. Yeah, like the big community down there was Sherry Street, and it's mm -hmm. literally you know, just bricks and mortar separating some of the, the, the richest companies in the country and some of the poorest communities in the country. Absolutely. I mean, um, uh, like as I said, I mean, I'm a, I'm a historian and in the last kind of three years, I've been, I've been digitizing this oral history archive mm -hmm. of the inner city. And you have these women, who, um, men who were taped in the, early, in the late 1980s, who were in their 80s then. And they remember like growing up being kind of Sheriff Street when there was kind of jobs in the area. And it was kind of, you know, it was always kind of rough and ready because it's a Docklands, but there was mm -hmm. working areas, there was pride and all, all the other things. As those jobs went uh, with the, you know, uh, with the bringing in of the, you know, of kind of automation, as those Con jobs containerization went... Containerization and all that type of stuff, yeah. Some, pardon me. Yeah, exactly, you know. And when those jobs start to kind of, you know, hemorrhage out of that area, that's where you see the... The, you know the growth in the in the in the in the, in the kind of social problems. Mm -hmm. Instead of addressing the uh, you know or the structural problem, there's no jobs in the area. That's why uh, these uh, you know uh, these kind of communities are on the ropes. They just say we'll just get rid of them, and we'll actually use that land. We uh, you know if we get rid of all these people, we can then speculate on this on on this land and make millions out of it. And that's. They kind of did that with the IFSC. They there was a rear guard action. There was a you know the, the you know there was the people in kind of Sheriff Street. There was Tony Gregory. There, there was all that you know as well. So they didn't quite get it on their own way. Yeah. But he still had that view that if we if, if we can get this kind of Dockland area for a song because a lot of it was owned by kind of CIE, a state company, that has never been really investigated mm -hmm. you know how a state company that owns hundreds of acres of prime inner city land ends up giving it away giving it away just handing it over 
you know what I mean? For and we were all like excited by the potential that we could become this financial hub in Europe or whatever. Well, that was part of it. I 